Gentlemen, welcome back to the shop today. A treat especial straight from J.A. Penn to your inner tubes, a middle linear compressor. Time! Now, a linear compressor is a very interesting device. It is set up for a specific task. It is very high reliability because there's only one to my knowledge, one moving part, the pistone, what reciprocates to and fro, as indicated here by the my typical maintenance scheme. They're extremely robust, but they are suited for purpose. They're spec for purpose. They're not what you would use as an energy source for other tools. Uh, for instance, a uh, reciprocating compressor or a roots blower type compressor, a um, rotary vein compressor. No, a screw compressor, um, because those essentially you are using as a power source. In this case, we use this specifically because we know exactly how much, what pressure, generally a lower pressure, and what flow rate. So you would use this in a copy machine sheeter to keep the sheet separated, or an industrial sewing machine, or... Uh, uh, like a bandsaw that needs just a little bit of air to blow the chips out of the way so you can see what's going on. This is a very specific uses case, but it's good because it's compact, it's very robust, it's also very efficient. One of the reasons it's efficient is because of the juxtaposition here. If we, if we take a rotary compressor, okay, a reciprocal rotary compressor, you are taking a, a motor that's turning and we are taking a reciprocating electrical feed in some current, what's essentially in the wire, reciprocating back and forth. We're changing that into a rotary motion, mechanical energy, electrical to mechanical energy in a rotary motion. And we're taking that rotary motion through a crank and turning it into a reciprocating motion. So in every transfer of energy, there is going to be some losses there. In this case, all we're doing is we're taking that sinusoidal uh, reciprocating electricity and we're using that to create a magnetic field what pushes and pulls the piston to and fro. So it's very much more energy efficient because there's not all these linkages and weird shit going on and transfer of you know this one to the other to the other to the other. It's more direct also because we don't have a containment vessel. We're not using this power anything in particular. We don't have a containment vessel. If you have a containment vessel, the gas that's been compressed is hotter. That's energy. And then when the gas sits there that's been compressed, the, the heat dissipates out of that. That's loss. That's waste heat. It's gone. In this case, because we're not storing that energy, you don't have any waste heat. You know, interestingly, if you have a big, a big receptacle for compressed air and you seal it up tighter than a nun, you come back in the morning and the pressure will have dropped. And a lot of times, well, in a lot of cases, I've seen this in a lot of cases, guys chase their tail looking for the leak. Uh, they don't want any leakage, no wastage. So you're looking for the leak. Well, there wasn't a leak. What happened was the gas got back down to ambient temperature. It got compressed. It heated up. It got back down to ambient temperature. And now the pressure has dropped by 10 PSI just because it's cooled down. I got the filter housing off here. Just some thick PP. You can see it's new old stock. It's been sitting on a shelf for a while because the urethane foam just turns to coffee cake. We'll have to replace that or, or omit it altogether. That is not going to do us any good at all. A foam, very interesting texture, but just turns to paste. I don't need that. I got those mid-body fasteners out. I'm going to pull that right through. What do we see here? Two solenoid coils. Now you can plainly see why this would be so robust. It's very robust in its embodiment. It's also very robust in its design no moving parts very few moving parts here is the prime mover here north south electromagnets now this is running on what do you finger 
that's running on 45 watts 50 hertz 230 volts which means this is uh, a european uh, this is built for europe in this case we would feed this 200 uh, some odd volts at 50 hertz and that would get rectified here you got to go through one coil and then go through the other coil to get the the north and the south pole but you're only getting a half wave you're getting half wave rectification here and it's just it would be chopping this guy off so anything that we, that we feed in here on a full ac gets chopped in half so you're only getting one half of the cycle that means that the polarity is always going to be the same so that we're not inducing any uh, hysteresis or anything like that these this central core is always seeing the same north south and what happens is we energize this electromagnet on half the wave so 50 times a second and it pulls back up against this return spring yeah so there's the spring and the spring seat and the little poppet there now here's the spring and the spring seat here you recognize that grease of course molybdenum disulfide we got some teflon labyrinth bearings here just for airflow not to well i guess the that would seal a little bit of air in there one would think so that air would act uh would aid this spring for not only spring force but also for damping we'll get into the head of her and get the piston out and then see now we got the reciprocating section reduced down we can see beautiful casting again beautiful machining in here well above and beyond kind of the quality you'd expect seeing that uh, made in japan of course this is an industrial component it's got a nice uh, isolation damping foot on her there and we can see this is where the rubber meets the load this is the valve here and you can see on the on the one stroke the valve closes seats up against here and on the charge stroke air uh, is allowed to go past this little check valve and charge the cylinder now on the output on the output so here's the you can hear how tight that is you can hear the reeds squeaking and the reeds here okay so here's here's the operational stroke here is char compress and then charge so intake compress intake compress intake compress and that happens 50 times a second on that half wave so what's uh, what we have here on two sides are little reed valves and these reed valves under pressure would close and the piston would have to pressurize the fluid in here in this case air enough to overcome uh, the pressure pushing these reeds closed so that's all that uh, is very simple just a little of the old in out in out you can see why that would last so long and why it's so very reliable now we got her connected up here to the variac unfortunately we only got 130 volts max coming out of this so this will not run a full chooch in fact it'll run only a quarter however we'll see if it works also this is great i just wanted to reiterate how great this was because you don't need any valves you don't need any uh, prvs any uh pressure reducing valves any kind of regulators nothing like that you size it for the task at hand and then all you got to do give it power or turn it off and it does what it needs doing so let's see here i think uh well here's red hot copper in your eye contact and we'll turn that up a little bit see if we can't get her to there we go She's starting no not enough not enough to get that thing turning or rather reciprocating let me just uh give her the old fonzarelli nope not enough sitting there idling at 24 watts all right now i got 240 feeding into this thing i don't think it'll blow up 
Famous last words. Conduct. Well, it doesn't like something. Must have blown the fuse. Huh. Well, it's powered up. Oh. Must have blew the fuse because it saturated the cord too quick or something. Hmm. Nothing for it. We need an extinction cord. North America's favorite connection. You think I was talking about Marrettes? No. <laughs> I'll just get that. You want to make sure it's cromulently affixed. Up to code and so forth. They're hooked up to the welding circuit. 220 volts. She'll suffer. What do we got here? 50 amperes, holy shit. At 220, I'm basking in the comfy, warm glow of 20 feet between us. Cordak! There you go, linear compressor has a defined purpose. This is fantastic for standalone air systems or actuation systems that don't that cannot be plugged into an existing air system. Also, you eliminate all the need for valves and so forth because you define exactly the amount of air and the at which pressure it needs to be delivered. All you need to do is flip the switch and feed it some pixies. And it gives her off. The question is now why our regular compressors, reciprocating compressors, run by rotary or rotating motors? Why aren't they run by linear motors? Just a couple of solenoids. It, it's got to be something to do with the economy of scale. You know, you got a motor and then you have uh, pulleys and, and bushings and bearings and all sorts of the mind boggles why they don't build them this way, but it's got to be something to do with the economy of scale. There's so many motors out there that it is cheaper than just making up two windings. Or maybe the two windings cannot provide enough uh, oomph, enough force to actually get up to higher pressures at certain volumes of air. But definitely an interesting usage case, and there's all kinds of these little niche uh, areas. This isn't so niche, this is quite a common industrial uh, piece but definitely if you just want to plug it in and go that's the cock for dolly thanks for watching keep your dick in a vice he's riding too. handsome boy you coming for a ride where are you going, Papa? <laughs>